Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. It's Tech Tuesday day today um, and we have another project. This time it's involving a jet ski. It's actually a Honda Aquatrax with a turbo on there. It's a 1200 series and uh, it needs a lot of stuff. So uh, we're going to start up on that as soon as we can. Before we do that, I'd like to kindly ask you to like and subscribe and uh, also hit the notification bell and maybe share it with someone. That'll help me out and also trigger the algorithm with YouTube. They've changed it recently. So um, more people can actually see it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap take this out of the wrap here and take the cover off and then we're gonna go ahead and start a service and also we have some other things that need to be done like a change of a reverse cable that doesn't work on it and some other things as well we're also gonna do an oil change and um, then we're gonna go ahead and wake it to life it hasn't been run for almost a year maybe a year and a half could be even more than that so let's see how that works so stay tuned and uh, we'll get this on the way as soon as we can well, let's see what's actually wrong with this Honda jet ski, which is the uh, reverse cable to start with. It does not come down, as you can see, and it will move up a little bit, but it does not uh, move constantly and also full deflection on the rear of the jet ski, meaning that you will never have a full reverse or braking capability. Um, the way it's designed is a little bit of a, probably a weakness from uh, the designers uh, here in the back. As you can see, they're all connected right here, as you can see here now. This is basically the reverse that goes down like that, and then it directs or deflects the water flow 30 degrees probably out to both sides here, and that's where it creates the, um, the drag and the reverse that you need. Now, the problem is over here on the left side, that's where the reverse cable actually is attached. It might be a little bit hard to see, but it's actually this cable that you have right there and if you look further in where it comes out through the hull all the way in there i don't know if you guys can actually see it but there is a uh, a knot a plastic knot hanging there and i'll see if i can move it around i'm not sure i'm pushed it a little bit further in now and i don't know if you can see it there but it's that gray one that's hanging there it should not be there it's actually a broken plastic knot that goes in and actually seals up through the hull further in uh, if you can see of where the cable goes in up there and that's where it's broken off on the top there is also a seal that's broken off in there as well so that means it will actually be uh, leaking water inside the ending compartment this way as well so making this in plastic makes it difficult for the reverser to function properly and that's the problem with it now to give you an idea on the other side here is the steering mechanism for the turn uh, let me see if I can get it up here a little bit as you can see, it's easy to see over here, it's the same idea uh, and all the way in there's a white knot that goes through the hull in there as well and in this case, this is working perfectly, it's also plastic and um, that's the reason they, they kind of die after a while. So if they get handled a little bit hard, this will break off and then your steering mechanism or your reverser will not work properly. So this is the reason why we're going to go ahead and take that apart and uh, put something else in. What are we going to put in? Well. We got a brass piece that we're going to put in instead and that's going to take care of that problem. So uh, now it's just a matter of getting the whole thing disassembled and then we take it from there. Well in order to get to the cable that's attached right here. There is a little bit of a locking mechanism you have to do first. You have to push this locking mechanism forward. There's a spring. It's spring loaded like that. Once you push it, let me see if I get some light on there for you guys. You see it moves back and forth. Just push it forward. And now it's actually connected with a ball joint in there as well. So now you just pull it off to the side and then the whole thing should be uh, available for you then. That's how you do it. So let's go ahead and try that. Just like that. So now the um, knot I was talking about is actually uh, displayed a little bit in here. I'll see if I can get it out for you guys. Here we go. That's the one. I have my fingers there. That's the one that's broken off and that needs to be replaced. So let's try that now. We can get a better view for you guys here. And uh, there we are, maybe. Um, once you pull it out, then here behind there, there's a small knot up there as well. 
you loosen that that's a contour screw and adjustment as well to make the reverser to use correct loosen that screw this off take the whole thing off and now you can actually take that broken piece off as well so that's basically how you do that so I'm just taking this part off right now and you can see I left I just turned the one ring just loosened this one up that way I know how far it's gonna go in again and I'm not gonna touch this knot because that's gonna be the adjustment so now it should be basically main adjusted the uh, part that is broken is this one as you can see it is having a ring all the way around it's a little bit of a fragile kind of uh, piece and um, that's the one we're gonna change the one I'm going to change to is this brass unit here. Uh, this is how big that actually was supposed to be. So now you can see what actually is broken off in there. And that's the plastic one, original. This is the brass reinforced one that can tolerate salt water as well. And uh, basically that fits straight over the cable. And you'll have a little bit of a fairing in there as well that's going to be expanding when you screw it in. And then that's going to function as a plot basically in the hole below the water line so it should be working from now on and forward but I recommend to spend those 20 bucks these actually uh, cost to put in change on your Hondas because if you're out in the ocean going fishing far away or whatever this could be a vital part uh, of your life when you get out there it will pump out when you sail in again if you see it in time but uh, change this to a brass one you're better off well, I would like to take this plate off because it'll take the whole reverser stuff off except for the thruster. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. Make sure you use the bolts, lay them uh, in a pattern where you put the same bolts into the same holes. That way you know it's going to work. So you can see here now, I got the uh, bottom part down. It's easy to work with now since you have more space and uh, now it's very easy to see what the problem is here uh, let me put this a little bit closer so you can see it a little bit of more light here Oops. there we are might be better it's not easy when they don't want to play ball here let's see there we go no Anyway, let me show you where that problem is. Up here, that's the plastic that's screwed into the um, the hull, basically in the aluminum. That plastic piece is the one that's broken off. The cable is running straight into this, and on the cable there is a um, seal that is looks like an O-ring, just like that here, and that goes over the cable and all the way in to seal it up. Uh, after that one, there is a another plastic thing here and it has a uh, piece missing that was supposed to be sitting right like this right there so when it goes into the into the hole and you screw it in the brass fitting that i'm going to put in when i get the other piece out is going to push this piece that plastic piece here up against the o-ring and then it's going to seal against the hull that's how it works and uh, in this case here I'm actually missing uh, the other half of this plastic piece so when you do order a um, uh, another brass fitting to put in here I kind of just like to say listen take take the set take the service set that gives you both the new o-ring it gives you a new plastic fitting in here as well and it gives you a brass or a uh, sink I hope it's not sink but a metal piece instead so it will be lasting for a long long time after that so uh, just make sure you get the service set that's the best well, to uh, remove this uh, plastic that's actually up there in that hole right there, as you can see, uh, into the wrinkles there. To remove that little fairing, uh, it can be really, really tough and there's still something in there, as you probably can see. Um, I tried a lot of different things, and including this little pair of pliers that goes out that doesn't work. Uh, in the end, I took a very, very narrow and thin flathead screwdriver, and if you do very very carefully get a hold of it on the other side you can actually get it to uh, jump out um, as you can see here I basically also warm it up I warmed it up a little bit too and then let go because the inside here there's a uh, corrosion uh, basically from the aluminum and uh, that's basically what happens um, over the years you get some 
really uh, you get some deterioration of course but that came off and now you can put in the brass uh, unit instead so that's what I did and it worked out well, well I just rigged uh, this nice little suction cup here that goes down in a hose like that up and um, removed the there you go uh, the oil filler knob up here as well and I sucked out the oil changed the oil filter and uh, that's basically coming in right now so uh, we're getting there now we're just waiting for some spare parts to get the, um, the little bushing that goes through here in the back up there when that arrives we can actually continue the progress now changing the oil and oil filter in this Honda is a little bit more critical than uh, and not that easy as you would think um, you take as much out as you can up in the front as I just showed you with um, the oil filler cap but also when you take the oil filter off to change it it's going to give you about maybe a quart a little bit less than a quart and then we got to go down and find the other place too now in the back you're going down here and we're going to dive down to have a look and it might be hard for you guys to see but it's actually located underneath the turbo right there that's where you got to go in and take your wood out as well so let me go ahead and get you down there so you can see what i'm talking about there we go See right there that one there is your oil filler cap it says oil as well it's a little bit hard that's where you put in the other suction uh, cup and then we're gonna start sucking out the last part of the oil so uh, let's get started on that now when you when you start to suck the oil out of that part it's um, not as bad as you think however Having the jet ski on the nose out there, you want to elevate it so it comes completely even. That way you get all the oil out of the jet ski. So uh, make sure that it's actually level and you should be fine. So here we are, I rigged it up. The suction is actually coming up through this big arc of a hose coming down here. This is the first part and we're looking at one quart that was actually in the front of here which is extracted out of here. And now it's a matter of Make sure you jack it up, make sure it doesn't run anywhere down here as well for safety purposes. And then you want to look at the engine that it's actually completely, let's say, horizontal. That way you get most of the oil out of it. And it is right now. So now we're going to go ahead and extract it. So let's see what happens when we give it some air. It should be coming out real well. Here it comes. Nice and dandy and uh, you just continue until it's empty so since the oil is now out and all the plugs are back in again new oil filter has been mounted i just put in 4.2 liters of or 4.2 quarts of oil and uh, in this case here we're using the 1040 from dtx and that's what we put in so uh, take your time with that don't rush it just take your time with it and make sure that uh, if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So if you cannot turn this thing off or you cannot put it on right and get it in, let's say on an angle or whatever, make sure these things are correctly tightened in as well. Then you should be ready to go ahead and start up whenever you are ready for it. Well, while we're getting all this uh, oil filter and oil done, the spare parts came for the part that we're missing in here on the power plant or power wall basically. And what is it? Well. Let's see here, this is actually the brass unit we're going to put in instead of the plastic. It's got a hollow area in there. In order to hold the, um, the cable in place, there's this little plastic piece that comes in here. And that holds the cable. That fits straight inside of that in there. And then there is a small O-ring seal that comes out in the end. So the whole assembly looks like this. And that's where the cable is going to be in the middle. We put into this to the hull and then you tighten it up uh, you could put some grease marine grease will work out fine and that will also keep it um, or you can put silicone as well but then it's going to be hard to get out again so grease I can recommend especially the uh, salt water resistant ones a little bit more expensive but that grease is good to keep all the water out and then it will work for years and it will even go ahead and make sure that the wrinkles if you want to take it off one day still works so that's a good idea so that's what we're going to do next now we're going to put that back on here again 
as you can see now the assembly is in place and I filled it up with uh, a special salt water resistant grease as well so just to make sure there's no water coming in but also that way you can always take it apart later and it should be an easy job to fix it so this is how it looks like when it's done well guys welcome back to the uh, test bench as you can see I'm making a little bit of a mess here but that's because I'm gonna mount a uh, Garmin uh, receiver fish finder on the jet ski as well and here is the stabilizer that's sitting on the side of the uh, of the boat and um, it's gonna be mounted right here and therefore I'm actually making a little bit of messy because I need to get in through this and actually uh, attach the screws that's gonna go in here it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than, than just such but anyway um, this is where it's gonna be and then we're gonna take the uh, um, you can see here the wire is going to go straight through here, not through the back, and then it's going to be attached onto this, um, and that should give a very good picture of what's going on when you're actually sailing to. You won't feel anything on the steering wheel or on the handlebars, it's just going to follow it. I've done it before, so and I made a video before how to do it, uh, but I just thought this might be a good idea to show you how that's going to work. But this is what uh, we're going to do next. So you're just going to use this uh, holder with a mount, put it on here. And then when you have it where you want it, you just go ahead and make the six marks or five marks with anything that can make a little bit of a hole will be perfect. Um, let's see here. I'm going to have it just about, uh, just about here. That looks good. So there's one, two, three, four. And the last one and now you got your mount holes and that's basically how you do it and then after that drill a few holes in there and uh, you raise them out the stuff with these we might have to get some thicker screws because they might not go all the way through but uh, we'll have a look at that next in a second so here's the transducer basically mounted I haven't tightened it yet uh, the screws or the bolts that comes with it for mounting is actually a little bit too short So I'm gonna go down to the local hardware store and see if I can get some that are double as long and then it's gonna be tightened in here as well then in the end This is where the uh, Wire comes out. There's a little bit of a hole in here But that's gonna be up towards the hull So it's not gonna be seen anywhere and then it can actually work and function quite nicely So I'm hoping this is gonna give a good picture on the uh, fish finder and also on the GPS So that should be okay it's the next morning, so we can continue the uh, Tech Tuesday. It is actually Tuesday, so it might be a little bit late issue this time, but um, we'll see if we can get it done anyway. Got more or less everything assembled here. Uh, just bring back the plate again. Make sure you get your bolts. I'm oh, sorry, bring back the plate here again. Make sure you get the bolts up and everything else. Now, the adjustment of the uh, reverse cable is really, really important. If it's not in the locked, this little um, shifter right here has a locking mechanism so this has to be a hundred percent correct when you put it back in if it has just a little bit of slightly play you're gonna have a handle up there that's gonna be halfway deployed and you don't want to have it deployed you want to have it completely flush so here you got to spend a little bit of time to make sure you get this um, little linkage here adjusted correctly and I still I can see this has been misadjusted by almost a half an inch so uh, let's go ahead and adjust that up and it should be fine after that if you've done it correctly, um, I don't know if you got enough light here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more light for you guys. Is that better? I'm sure. <laughs> mm. Well, if you've done it correctly, you can check it afterwards and make sure it's adjusted right as well. There's a locking mechanism up here as well that should be working. And it should be working just like that. And that's uh, the reverser adjustment and also that little bolt in there that's been changed so we're back to the mount of the uh, garmin 44 here the echo show or the echo map i put it over to the side as you can see here so it's going to be more space for either water food or uh, fishing gear whatever you want to do and then i'm thinking about having the battery connected underneath because it's going to run on a separate battery but it works really well so you can actually close the lid so if you want to have fun, it's not going to fall over the place and also you'll have an ability to use it whenever you want to. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and install that part. Well, day after, take Tuesday, still in full progress. We are uh, working on the uh, Honda Aquatrax 
and as you can see I've had a little bit of trouble to wake it alive after these couple of years um, it had a uh, bad battery and uh, some other stuff going on so I'm trying to go ahead and give a little bit of juice from that but to give you a recap on what we've done so far we fixed the uh, reverser cable down here which has been a little bit of a uh, challenge as well it's all set up and really working nicely and beautiful now then we've been uh, mounting a transducer which is located up here underneath this stabilizer right there I have to go ahead and clean it up a little bit as you can see the wire goes through here and then it runs all the way through the inside up in the front and um, then the there you go the Garmin is actually located right here in the glove compartment and um, so far temporarily we have the battery installed right here but it might be moved around a little bit but that's where it is so far so it's been a little bit of a challenge to get everything sorted out so today we're gonna see if we can get this thing here all sorted out now it's probably a little bit of old fuel in it the fuel could very well be that we need to go ahead and take out and get some new ones in so the first thing I'll do here this morning is to go ahead and take the uh, fuel lines off and then I'm gonna give it uh, some clean fuel put some spark plugs in there and everything else once I get this thing turning so um, that's what we're gonna start up doing now the um the jet ski is getting a little bit further ahead in progress however it's gotten bad fuel in there and i actually tested it as you can see over here i uh, did a little bit of a testing on this this is actually fuel uh, and tested it on one of those in there i put in i took a small uh, briquette for the barbecue basically to see how explosive this was and uh, i have to say it cannot even turn on the barbecue so you could probably imagine how that's going to be in an engine so now i'm emptying the whole engine and tank from uh, the fuel that's in it and then we're going to go ahead and get some new stuff in so initially i actually got a vapor kind of siphon in there and got that out and now we're emptying with this through the uh, fuel injection system right over here uh, so whenever we put it on it's going to empty the last part as you can see it's running there right now and uh until it's completely empty that's what's gonna happen now and then after that new fuel and maybe some uh, sea foam add additives in there and i think it's gonna be running i think that's the uh, finalization of the emptying of the tanks and the system this is the return line let's go ahead and have a look um turn the pump on and it's all dry there's no bubbles coming out it's completely dry now and that means we can go ahead and put some new fuel on it and get it all started up from the beginning let's try it out the jet ski progress here to get it started is actually getting a little bit more sophisticated and such got an extra battery here and actually i have the car to deliver some power to it and uh, it looks like i might have a weak starter so far i have had it running already on two cylinders because i have to knock off all the rust that's on the valves in there it's been sitting for so long that the rails probably are so rusty you can't really close and seal up properly so i cleaned all the spark plugs and everything else and now it's just a matter of uh, time before it starts it did run on the two here on two and three i also had them running for on one and four and as we get them all kind of working again i'm hoping and uh, actually kind of confident that it will start at some point so uh, the only thing is i cannot run it for too long because it needs cooling and i can't have the water running with it when it doesn't start but um that's how we're doing it right now so it's a little bit of a long process but it is getting there it's getting closer as we're getting the battery charged and uh, coming from that one over there it should work out let's give it a shot now just see if it works there we go now it's running in two cylinders at least i got him running let me take the next ones afterwards At least I got these two running uh, and now we're knocking off slowly all that rust in there and uh, now I'm going to change to the other two and then pair and pair at some point I guess I'll get the whole engine awake and, uh, and it should be running again so hopefully that's going to be fine. I just hope that the starter can actually turn all four uh, and it's got power for it. It had had some water in it at some point but uh, let's see we're getting there. It's getting good progress right now. Well, we're reinstating one cylinder at a time and so far now we're up to three so we can knock some more rust off and uh, let's see if we can get that to work. I'm not 100% sure, but let's see. That was nice, guys. Perfect. Don't run it for too long because you got hit gaskets and so forth. You don't want to blow them. So... Uh, 
so far it runs pretty nice let's go ahead and put four in there see what happens well now I put all four in there let's see what happens this time for the first time let's put some stuff on there and let's see what goes oh yeah 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 sounds really nice actually and fast let's turn it off yeah what a victory so far now we got a walking uh, from the dead so now we can continue our journey here and get it all sorted out as well it's getting there it will be sailing by the end of the week i'm quite sure well guys after working long hours here to get this uh, jet ski awakened up again uh we're now on its own battery just got it over there now but i actually used the car to jump it it has a bad relay i want to change that too but now the engine is running as you can see right now everything is working absolutely beautifully and it's fast too and uh, right now it seems like it's not missing a beat at all you got the cooling going on right now so I'm just trying to uh, get all this sorted out basically. As you can see I got a little bit of a toolbox all over the place right now. But I've had everything basically taken apart. And uh, right now I'm just waiting for it to get warm and then uh, we'll assemble it. But uh, that's how I fix the jet ski guys. Now it's just assemble the whole thing, put all the bolts back into place. And then we're gonna go in the water and try it. I hope you like this Take Tuesday. It's a little bit longer than usual. And it's been a long day, so let's go ahead and recover what it was. Well, first the reverser cable got all adjusted and got that bushing in between set in, which took a little bit of time as well. Now the reverser is working absolutely beautiful. Then it was an oil filter and oil that had to be changed as well, and we got that sorted out. And uh, then we installed this nice little transducer with the associated garment up here. So you have a fish finder and a depth finder, sonar and clear view uh, on this bow as well. And um, then we had to awaken the, uh, the engine. The engine has been down for like two years and uh, that was a hard one. Once I got it cranked over, um, that was first without any uh, first oil. I actually used just WD-40 inside the cylinders to make sure it could turn. Once that was all done with no spark plugs, no compression, I would take one at a time, first one spark plug. And then I could hear that was firing, then took the next one, and the next one, and the next one, then I took them two at a time. So I had one and four, two and three going together, and once I got that fired up, it was running. Then I put three in there, and then four in the end. And now it's running nice and dandy. And here it is, and it's running idle. I had not even adjusted the driver or anything else. I emptied the uh, entire fuel tank, and also the, um, injector side as well all that fuel all the old rest of fuel is actually out over here i gotta get disposed of that now once that's done then uh, put in some high octane in there as well plus a little bit of uh, seafoam and now it's running so uh, that's it still running after 10 minutes really nice what i didn't tell you was i actually changed all the uh, trailer lights as well and now we're going to go ahead and renovate the trailer it needs new um, leaf springs and it also needs new assemblies underneath. It needs a few mounts for the jet ski as well. So we'll do that next. And um, I don't think I'm gonna make anything that it's, it's gonna be kind of easy. So once that's done, that's the uh, end of the whole Tech Tuesday. Well, it's the uh, day after all the restoration of the jet ski. So let's go and have a look at it. Um, just got a new charge battery here let's go ahead and put that on see how it goes it's a cold engine hopefully we are ready to get this all sorted out um, I don't know if I can actually do it with one hand it needs a little bit of throttle here when I start it up let's see if I can get it somewhere okay, it needs a little bit of throttle here when I start it up so let's see what happens some cooling on it so it does start um, I do have a problem with the uh, main relay though so I don't trust it it was yesterday I heard a bit of a hissing sound or a buzzing sound and uh, that's enough for me to change it just go out here 
Well, that started up pretty nice, which was great. Um, now we just install, we're just missing to install this battery, and that's gonna go straight in the aft uh, compartment here, which is actually located right down here in the in the bag over there. Anyway, um, I do know that I have a problem with the main relay, and as it is right now, it's actually also sound nugget. So if you can hear it, I'm gonna put the camera straight down, you can hear it. You might be upside down though. You hear that hissing sound right there, or that ticking sound? That's the main relay trying to drain the battery completely down. I know this sounds funny and I hope you'll be able to hear it, but it has this like bzzz, a humming or buzzing sound, and that means it's not 100% shut off. And uh, it goes, well, it just shut off, now it turned on again. So it comes on and off, on and off, and now it's off again. And that drains the battery slowly. Um, and it might also be that you don't have the trust to the main relay, meaning that you won't have any uh, significant things in your display. You might not be able to start it. It might come up with a warning before you actually start it, but you know the truth of the matter is it won't start. So when you hit the start button, nothing's gonna happen. So uh, it needs a new uh, main relay as well. So we're gonna change that as soon as it comes in. And um, that will be in here in a few days from now. I already ordered it and then we changed that as well. So uh, once that's in, I think we can uh, trust that it's going to work from there on. It's a pretty known problem. These, uh, this is a 2002 uh, Aquatrax F1200X or 12X. And um, it is a known issue. They are not that expensive anymore. They're about 30 bucks uh, on Amazon or you might be able to get on eBay as well. But um, it's a good idea to get that changed if it's about that year of the jet ski just change it you'll be better off in the end at least you have the trust in your relay and you can go out and have fun with it so uh, that's about it we'll see when that comes in and uh this is day four with the refurbishment of the jet ski I have decided now to get the main relay it's coming in tomorrow but today I've decided to go out and check it out and see if it works because I've had some consistency with regards to the startup sequence and everything else on the jet ski so I think we'll go ahead and uh, finish it up and then we're gonna go out and try it on the water so uh, stay tuned for this so now it's ready for his maiden flight it's got everything set up hooked up with a cooler on the back fishing gear as well and now is ready to go let's go down and have some fun on the in the water. Here's Anthony, he's gonna try it out. <laughs> Renee's a genius, watches YouTube, he'll help you fix anything. Just so you know, personal experience. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Put it on, let's go ahead and have fun in the water. <laughs> works yeah awesome so guys i just put the jet ski in the water it's fired right up it's on the way out uh, for a fishing trip and uh, i'm going to join up on that a little bit later however just to let you know it runs really great i'm quite happy with the product as it is right now the tech tuesday is uh, basically over i know it's longer than usual but uh, i hope it's worth it for you this is how you awaken an old jet ski that might have been frozen up over the years and also the engine you don't know how good it is anymore but anyway now it's running and hopefully it's going to be running for the next many years to come i know anthony's happy out there and now he can go fishing any way he wants to and uh, the gps is working sonar is working everything is actually working and um, now is only time to uh, say thank you for this time before I do, I like to uh, emphasize to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, it's gonna help me out and some other people out as well. And um, until then, I have to do like a tree and leave. So see you next time. Here we go, after a day underwater, 
The ski is still in it and it is sailing.